Welcome to the one of the final Meet the Filmmakers session. Uh, as our competition competition programs are nearing the end of uh, the 22nd Black Knights Film Festival, we have here the crew of Sunburn that is approaching its uh, world premiere. Would like to welcome uh, director Vincent Alva Al Vish. Alves Duo, uh, uh, one of the stars of the film, uh, Nuno Pardal, and uh, Bandora da Cunha Delas, uh, who is the sales sales agent of the film. Producer. Oh, sorry about that. <laughs> no problem. <laughs> Important note. <laughs> so welcome. Uh, I Thank I'd you. like to I'd like to kick off uh, the the obvious question of. Um, you made a made one of the most exciting films about waiting, <laughs> if I may may put it that way. Uh, there are three three men and the women are waiting for a mysterious character to arrive in a beautiful villa, and as the so story unfolds, there we learn the different uh, different perspectives of uh, on this person. Uh, but um, what brought you this story? Why, why did you want the story? Why did you want to tell the story of waiting? Dave, waiting for David, the character, the mysterious character about to arrive. Well, the main reason why I wrote the film was that I got to a certain uh, point of my life, a stage of my life where I was a little bit fed up <laughs> of my love stories uh, ending so badly, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, um, and thinking that maybe I, I was at. A, 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 at a place where I didn't know if I really wanted to leave something else again, uh, like a, a relationship, or if I want I wanted some of my relationships uh, past to come to, to to come over again to have to if someone reappeared and then suddenly like this happened. I mean, a person three years that I hadn't seen for three years uh, called me to ask me for dinner to see if the story could be um, could be back again and but between the phone call and the person coming it was 2 months because he was not in the in the country so in 2 months i had a lot of time up to think about my life and what to expect um, and, and and it's and it's movies and it's cinema you, you know our imagination we are Every every day we try to, for instance, just now I was walking on the street looking at people that live here in Tallinn and I would put myself in their shoes trying to imagine what if it was me living here, what kind of life would I have? So uh, Sunburn is a little bit about that. It's, it's all these, these four, the three guys and the girl have the opportunity while they are waiting for the reality to come to somehow dream about the or, or e about their expectations in life and relationships, and whether or not the past can actually come back to haunt us, in, and and we can um, catch catch again what we we have lost for 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 some reason. You could call it a metaphor too. We, you could, you can call it a lot of stuff. I don't know. Waiting is a it's. A, I know people today don't have uh, think that waiting is a waste of time. <laughs> we are in a hurry to go somewhere. I don't know where. We are going very fast, but it seems that we are all going somewhere very fast. Uh, and sometimes waiting is a good thing, just to um, really to be sure if that of what we are living, it's exactly what we want to live. So David is a, David is a little bit. Uh, if he's not a person, is that question, what do you really want to do with the rest of your life? Uh, when you are conscious of it. So I think most of us uh, pass through life without actually thinking about what we are doing with it. Uh, sometimes it's good to think about that. But uh, let's talk a bit about the characters as well. I mean, this. David almost seems like almost like a diabolical character because he has seems to have such a such a strong influence. Influence in, in the, other, yeah. the other guys, yeah. And uh, especially uh, on your your character as well, Francisco, who seems to be one of the most more masculine type uh, yeah. in a heterosexual relationship, but he also has this uh, past with David. Maybe you could comment on those. Uh, 
on this this web of uh, in relationships. Yeah. He's trying to be the. I, I believe my character is the one who's trying to be the most resolved guy, and maybe at the end you understand that the the one who's still <laughs> <laughs> is the worst he's in the, the situation because <laughs> he's still pigs inside of something, uh, and the other guys it's uh, David. They've, how can I say? I believe my character is the the one who suffers my, more in the movie. It's That's like because it's his character. If the other <laughs> actors were here, yeah, yeah. they would say, "No, mine no, is the mine, one who no, suffers no, no. more." But it, it, it's in, it, each character in different uh, situations um, feels the same, okay? But uh, in my <laughs> my point of view, <laughs> uh, I, f I felt like it was uh, okay. We all have something in common with David, but. Um, Maybe I'm being uh, selfish, <laughs> if you can call it, but I, I believe the, um, the Francis uh, is the one who suffers more. Sorry. The Maybe question is, I, first of all, uh, all uh, I, wanted, I wanted to break some um, cliches when you talk about LGBT films, first of all. The first thing is I'm very glad the film is here, and which is not an LGBT film. Uh, fe film festival. festival and this left me really really happy and honored because I think we have to start to dismantle this idea uh, destroy this idea that uh, LGBT films must be put in a corner and only go to LGBT film, film festivals film. that has to end second I wanted to make a film about feelings and not uh, um, uh, a community say with this saying that uh, I didn't want anyone to talk about and die of AIDS or be mugged and killed in an alley or the promiscuity in, of a nightclub. I'm a little bit tired of, of, of fathers that don't accept their sons. I think it, it's a film where I try to talk about all that, but... Uh, for in a, for a genera for an older generation who has dealt with that already, and it's now in another situation of their lives. Uh, that 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 is happening now in Western countries in Europe, which is my generation is thinking about. Now we can get married. Now we can have children. Now we can have a normal life, right. or what we call usually the normal, normal life. heterosexual life. Uh, but do we want it? Or or we don't want it. So I wanted to put this film in a very masculine way. Uh, also, not, there's always a cliche that uh, all homosexuals are terribly gay and terribly feminine. Uh, so I wanted to be them to be masculine, to talk about feelings, to talk about relationships. Uh, and if you close your eyes, they can be four guys, four girls, uh, Four men waiting for a girl, or four girls waiting for a man. Uh, you know, the, 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 why I choose this way? Because I think it's the most uncommon uh, thing to do, is to put these three men emotionally destroyed because of a of a love story that didn't went very good, didn't didn't run very good. It was so not very so good. we have people speaking about having kids and not having kids, about uh, staying with somebody forever and dating someone that is married, uh, not dating, uh, how do we call ourselves, how we put ourselves in boxes. So in a way, it's how we see relationships in a very postmodern way. It's uh, everything can happen. So we are all people and maybe we want to be in a relationship, maybe we don't, maybe we want to have a kid, but maybe we don't want to have a kid with the person we, we are with. So it's a lot about freedom of choices in, at 40s, in a way. And at the end, the gay people are making the same question that, that heterosexual people, <laughs> when they are 35, 40, 45, it's exactly the same questions. There's no difference, you know? Uh, and I think we need uh, uh, more films like that uh, that show that yes we are different but at the same time we are not because the, the fundamental questions questions which is love and relationships the same. are exactly the, the same, same yeah. are exactly the same uh, so David comes to to kind of destroy a little bit of that um, real reality that you that you feel 
looks very calm and organized and uh, uh, everything is going okay established, yeah. established for them and suddenly that phone call, that phone call like makes <laughs> it start cracking the mirror you know because they now it's not okay they are not okay none of them are is okay and especially is if if i could do the sequel i think the most destroyed of them all is actually david he's even more destroyed than the four of them uh, because of all the the thing, all the things he did, and we listened that he was, you know, I, I I know someone like that. It's a very beautiful person, it's a wonderful person, a very beautiful person. But without knowing, whenever she passes, she destroys everything <laughs> around her. She, it's it's like a plague, <laughs> and she she destroys all the men around her. It's terrible, and she's miserable and unhappy. Because she can't leave a relationship, a normal relationship, because she's too much beautiful. So it's uh, beauty can be a problem. Beauty can be a curse. I, I'd like to just add a uh, comment that on my part that uh, yeah, I think it's uh, it's beautiful how the film uh, manages to avoid many like tropes or cliches uh, with uh, LGBT themed films. That's that's why it becomes this universal film about people. And uh, the LGBT element is just a natural part of it, not yeah. not like a banner. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, but I also wanted to talk about a bit about uh, locations because, although there are not many, <laughs> not many locations in the film, they seem to be playing uh, an interesting part. First of all, the villa that uh, seems um, it's a very modern, beautiful villa, but it seems an an anonymous because it looks like it's a rental villa for the char character, is not someone's home. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Am I correct? And um, first of all, that the sleek villa, then uh, the beautiful uh, beachside, the rocks, also might be a metaphor for something, and all, and then the for forest fire, which uh, is clearly seen in the background, which mm -hmm. is uh, might be an allusion to the global global warming and the droughts that are plaguing Europe right now, or or it might be you know the inferno that is about to come with David. <laughs> <laughs> So and maybe you true. maybe you could discuss uh, why the, did you choose the, those yeah, locations? The play, it's in the south of Portugal. What, where we, we shot in the south of Portugal in a place called Comporta, which very, it's very popular, very fashionable yeah. now to go there. Uh, Madonna goes there to <laughs> for riding. Uh, Sarkozy has a house there. Carla Bruni. They all now they are they all have houses. Even Nuno Pardal sometimes go there. Even uh, Nuno Pardal yeah. sometimes <laughs> goes there. <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding. Uh, w we went there because that's where his per his character is an architect would probably uh, build a house a summer house probably that that would be the place and uh, in a house that is um, yes it's anonymous I wanted not to have much character that's that was on purpose so you couldn't read a lot about about the character itself it, it, the, the, the house is just a it's a place. It's, it's a just place. like the rest of the pine woods around. It's nothing. It doesn't matter. It's not supposed to impress. It's just a, a, a stage where they meet, you know. But we, we, we for us, it was very um, normal and to choose that. We, we, I thought it with reality, not in terms of metaphors or anything. The, the rocks and it's very near. It's it's my reality. I was. I was born in the south part of the country, so that kind of uh, of, of uh, the, the rocks uh, near the ocean, the, the pine, the, the, the forest around, all that for me is very um, home, you know. Yeah. The only thing which is actually it was built in the film was the fire. That's true. Portugal is a country where, like California, uh, every summer burns a lot. Uh, a lot and, lo uh, and la uh, yeah, last, last, year. last year when, when we were shooting more than 100 people died in the fires there was a lot of, of dead people last year uh, so the fires are also a reality but here what I wanted to show and I hope it, it's, it has passed in the film was uh, 
the fire you can see the fire is uh, coming approaching approaching and they just don't care they don't leave they, they don't care they are more obsessed with the guy coming for <laughs> dinner than the fire and the planes and the fire is uh, they just don't care <laughs> they just look especially at the end of the film they look okay. drinking wine like they are kind of obsessed with something which is not the danger of the other stuff that is coming uh, is more dangerous. Than, yeah, more dangerous. It's much more, much more dangerous than the fire. So, but also the house. When we were doing the the scouting for the house, when Vicento saw the house, one of the things that was that he spoke about a lot was that the house has a very particular relationship with That's the true, space yeah. around because it has a lot of windows so we have the sensation that we see through the house but we do, don't really so it has it's like the the outside of the pines enters the house uh, so it has a it, it it looks like a little bit like a person of the open book but in reality it's not so it's kind of also the house kind of also a metaphor for the characters that at the beginning just look by the pool so natural and then you start to go see deeper and you see that there's a lot of things that you don't really know about them and they don't know about each other and, and another thing is there is no color the house has no color it's everything is gray so the color is their skin the only thing popping up of the houses is the skin of the actors it's uh, the only thing with that is warm the rest of the living room, the bedrooms, the bathroom, nothing, nothing has color. It's just their skin to, to, to um, you know, to, to come out. Uh, you, I could have chosen a very, uh, you know, typical Alentejo, Alentejo house from the so south typical part of the country, a typical traditional house. That, that it would be a house that would stand with a, with a character and personality and, it, and it, it would influence them. And I didn't want anything to... In I wanted to be lost in that, at the same time, in that kind of environment. They, w they are lost. It's like they were put there like, as if on an island yeah. surrounded by... Like a Darwin experience. Yeah, yeah something mm -hmm. like that. So, and they have to live with, the, with each other. They can't in this kind of a big brother thing. I would like to thank you now, Vincenzo, Nuno, and much. Pandora. Thank and uh, yeah, I wish you a very beautiful world premiere. And I would recommend everyone who th doesn't have a ticket for Sunburn yet, there are three screenings at the festival. Go see the film. It's great. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you.